Today we're going to make games using Scratch. Scratch is a very flexible tool that can be used to make different kinds of games, animations, and other things. Today, because we only have a limited time, we're going to focus on one specific thing you can do with Scratch. This is the Scratch website. You click on Create at the top to get started. This brings you to the Scratch editor, which has lots of different parts. Over here is called the stage, and it's the actual screen of your game. Down below is a list of all of the sprites in your game. Sprites are like characters or game objects. In the middle are all the instructions that you can give to the sprites. And over on the right hand side is where you put the instructions together to tell the sprites what to do. For example, I'm going to go to events and grab this block called when the green flag is clicked. It is the main starting block that we'll use. I'm then going to go to motion and grab the block point towards and attach that. Then by clicking on the tiny little black arrow, I can change what the cat should point towards. And I'm choosing the mouse pointer. Now when I click the green arrow, the cat should point towards the mouse pointer. So let's try it. You can see that it worked. The cat did point towards the mouse pointer when I clicked the green arrow. But what I actually wanted was for the cat to keep pointing towards the mouse pointer as I move it around. To make something happen more than once, I need to go to the control section over here and grab a block called Forever. Forever is a loop block. It kind of has a mouth, and the mouth can open over other blocks, and it will make those blocks get repeated over and over and over again forever. Let's try that now. You can see that the cat now points at the mouse pointer, and it keeps pointing at the mouse pointer. The forever block makes that instruction get repeated over and over again. Going back to motion, the very first block is called move 10 steps. I already know that move makes things move the way they're pointing. So what's going to happen when I click on the green arrow now? You can see that the cat is going to point towards the mouse pointer and then move the way it's pointing and then repeat those two steps over and over again, which makes it chase the pointer. This um, stop sign here stops everything, by the way. That's cool. We've got a cat that chases the pointer around. I'm also going to use the shrink tool up here just to make the cat a bit smaller, so it's got more room to move around in. That's great. Next, I'm going to change the background picture. That's over here next to the sprites. And here all our instructions disappeared because we're now looking at instructions for the backgrounds, and there aren't any. By clicking on this little tab here, I can change to a drawing tool that lets me draw on the background. Now for this game, I need to draw some walls, and it's important that all the walls are the same color. Here I just changed the line size. So I'm going to draw a bit of a maze. And I'm going to... Make sure all the walls are exactly the same color. Great. Now I can go back to scripts mode, which is where we set instructions, and go back to the cat. I'm going to give it another instruction now to tell it um, if it's touching the wall, it should go back to the start of the game. So to ask questions, you use this if-then block. And because I want the cat to keep asking this question all the time, I don't just want it to ask it once. I'm going to put this block inside the forever block so it gets repeated as well. Then there's a diamond-shaped hole here, and the diamond-shaped blocks come from the sensing section. You can see the first two are around touching. The second one is if I'm touching a certain color. So that's the block we want. I'm going to slide it into there. To set the color, you click on the color once, which gives you a pointing finger, and then you use the pointing finger to click on the color you want, and it fills in the box. Now, what happens when the cat touches a wall? I'm going to make it go back to the start. Now, whenever we move something in Scratch, we use motion blocks, which are up here. We've used a few already. And I know that to move something instantly, like a teleport, you use the block called go to. And I want this one, the one that says go to X and Y, lets me say where I want it to go to. X and Y are positions on the screen. 
Um, to find out the x and y coordinates, you just hold the mouse there. So I'm going to make the cat start there. Now you can see over here the numbers tell you the coordinates of the mouse. So if I hold the mouse there and read the numbers, it's minus 221 for x and it's 159 for y. So let's remember those. It was minus 221 and it was, um, I think it was 159. Hopefully that's close enough. So now, when I click the green arrow, the cat will follow these instructions. Do this forever. Point towards the mouse pointer, move 10 steps in that direction. If you are touching this color, then go to this position. And after that, you can see this little arrow means go back to the start of the forever loop and just do each of those instructions again step by step. So let's see if it works. That's looking pretty good. I can move around the maze, and if I touch the walls, I get sent back to the start. So there's one more thing I'm going to show you, and then we're going to all go off and make our own version of this game. And once you've finished that, we'll have a discussion about ideas we could add to make it more interesting or personalizing it in your own style. Um, but first, I want you all to do the same, um, same setup I've done here, where the cat follows the mouse pointer and goes back to the start if it touches the walls. So before we do that, there's one more thing I'm going to do, which is add a goal to the end of the level. So I could do that by drawing a different color onto the background, but I could also do it by adding a new sprite. So I'm going to do that now. This button here adds a new sprite from the library. There are lots of things to choose from. Let's go with balloon. Now we have a balloon in our level. I'm going to put it here at the end. And the balloon doesn't have any instructions yet. That's OK. I'm not going to give it any. I'm going to go to the cat instead, and I'm going to go back to control and add another if then block. And it's also going to be inside the forever loop. But this time, when I go to sensing, I'm going to grab this first touching block, which is for touching um, objects and special things instead of colors. So you can see here, I can say, if I'm touching the balloon, then something should happen. Now, for something to happen, Let's go to looks, where you can change the way things look. Strangely, say is under looks, not under sound. That's because it doesn't actually make a sound. It's a graphical thing. So I'm going to make the cat, because we're talking, we're talking about the cat at the moment. I'm going to make the cat say, you win for five seconds when it touches the balloon. Let's try that out. You can go around the maze. If you touch the walls, you go back to the start. But if you manage to get to the balloon, the cat says you win for five seconds. Cool. That's all I want to show you for now. If you can find the free computer, go off and make your own version of this game. We will help you get through the steps. And once we're finished, we'll have a chat about what we can do next to personalize our projects.